we're doing nine varieties of wheat, working with wheat breeder Steve Jones out of Washington State. Uh, he sends uh, varieties out that are intentionally express a high variability so that we can select and adapt it to our local environment. We're also doing a winter barley that he is, is getting five tons an acre in organic systems out in, in Washington. So oh, here's triticale and wedge wheat. So it's just, I like to put this up because you know, it was just a few years ago when people said, you can't grow wheat in New Hampshire. And, and, and here's winter wheat and triticale and it looks pretty good to me. So one of the big things in reducing our energy input was partly the, uh, you know, going to biofuel, closing the loop, keeping the systems on farm. The other is using uh, what we, Use substituting the biology of and characteristics of certain plants to substitute for where we'd use uh, equipment or labor. So in this case, we have a tillage radish, and what or a, it's, which is basically a, a daikon radish that's been selected, not for its taste, but because it 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 drills down into the soil and breaks up compaction, and which is substituting for using a ripper to break up that subsoil compaction, which is very energy intensive. Um, but what it also does is that it collects nitrogen at the end of the season. And it, the more nitrogen you can give it, the more it grows and, and grows deep. And it's an incredible bank uh, for that. And if you, any of you have to do manure management and try to spread it, you know, fall spreading, you lose 50% of the value by the next season. Here's a way to bank that and it starts, it, this by the way, you plant it in August, it winter kills, and then releases that nitrogen the next spring. There's not a piece of equipment that could replicate that. So we're, and it's doing it all because it wants to do this. This is what the tillage radish is, it, you know, and we're setting it up to fail, so we're calling this agricultural jujitsu. <laughs> so, and we do that in a lot of different, different ways. I mean, this is one example. Um, oh, and by the way, we're, we're, we're experimenting with, again, re reducing tillage so we're not losing the, the carbon, so we're no-tilling some of this tillage radish in. Uh, we're also doing skim tillage. Uh, that's a, a modified rotavator on the front, so we're just skimming the top. So we're just, and this is about setting up competition. Uh, and again, the same idea of using the plant's propensity to, to and express themselves against themselves in some ways. So that in, in this case, we're, we're planting a hairy vetch, no-till into a perennial sod, uh, but we're also applying extra carbon amendment, which is sucking the excess nitrogen out, uh, suppressing the growth of the sod. We're also, it, uh, we're flail mowing the, the sod to, to intentionally stress it, so we give the legume a head start and then reduce the amount of nitrogen available to the other crops. So low energy, but allowing the biology to do the work for us. And the, and the purpose is not just to get more nitrogen in the soil. Oh, here's, here's another shot of, uh, of that. So not tilling, because we don't want to till and, and lose that carbon through uh, you know, decomposition. We actually want to keep that in. We keep the root structure. We keep the soil structure in place. So. So, oh, so that, that was hairy vetch, but here's another example where we, we did the same basic technique, but uh, this is oats. Now, we didn't kill the perennial sod underneath, but we, we stressed it enough that not a lot came up, and we got, so you can see a little bit of orchard grass coming up, but it matures really early and then dies back and doesn't really compete with the, uh, with the oats that came up. And underneath, we also undersowed uh, a red clover. So the, which also comes in later in the season. So we get a crop of oats, we harvest that off. Here we have, uh, there's the oats. You can see the clover isn't really coming in a lot yet. And then we get the oats, we get the oat straw off, and then we got a crop of clover hay at the end of the year. Or we sh where we're moving now is actually less hay and more, more grazing too. We're just building our intensive grazing infrastructure to be able to do it on a whole field scale. And so then instead of flailing at the next stage, stage, instead of flailing it using mechanical equipment to suppress that, it will overgraze it. 
and do the same technique. This is, a, this is the spring wheat, we tried it. Uh, it didn't do quite as well as the oats, it needs a little more nitrogen and since we're not turning up all that soil and decomposing the organic matter, we have a little less fertility but if we added, we we're able to add additional uh, nitrogen through spreading, uh, we may be able to get a better crop with this no-till organic wheat. And again, we had the same thing. And so the effect of this, this, this lower till, this skim till and, and uh, no till, this is after one year where we had a, a plot where we'd done, uh, it's organic but conventional plowing, and then this was the skim till. And you can see the, just the incredible difference in, in, in roots and compaction. And you can imagine this next season, which, which if you were to plant into this, which, which if you were a root, which would you pr prefer to be in? And you can see we still, we lost all our fine perennial roots that were going down 20 inches. We still have them here in this system. So if you were here last year, you probably saw Jeff Moyers from Rodale talk about this. And so this is our, our version. And this roller crimper that they've developed, that was where we I was, got very excited about this idea of mechanical open source, this farm hack idea. They've published the designs for that particular piece of equipment, the CAD design, so you can have it manufactured locally at very low cost. So this was very, um, and so once that mulch is down, it does all sorts of things. So we're, we're, we then plant through that in a single pass, reducing our energy use, uh, reducing water uh, evaporation later in the season, adding over a ton of organic matter each time we do this, and reducing our cultivation passes. So we go down from, say, eight passes to three. And you can do this, I mean, I'm showing you some technology, but some of this is very simple. You can do it in a small scale. This is crimson clover. You crimp with a, a board and a piece of angle iron. You just stomp on it. The same principle works. It, the biology is the same at whatever scale. And so here we have some pretty, you know, we've had to work pretty hard to be able to set up no-till equipment that actually works through such a heavy mulch. And. Uh, and we've got that to work, but you can substitute this on a small scale with a stick. I mean, you can transplant, you can pull it back, uh, transplant right through that heavy mulch. And so here's the example. You can see single pass, really reducing our energy input. And then with big seeded crops, you do need to use big seeded crops that have the energy to push through the mulch. But you can see here, uh, they do push through, and here's a sunflower crop. Uh, that's in September still providing a pretty good weed suppressing mat. And again, the next year, you're gonna be turning that in and adding that carbon, and that's gonna be decomposing and helping to build that soil. So here's, again, using that, that vetch. You can see it's really suppressing the undergrowth. And so this is just a, a shot of, of rolling that vetch down and killing it when it's, when it's at the flower, flower stage. The other, we're going even further than that and instead of even using the mechanical killing, using this frost killing, which I mentioned with the, with the tillage radish, but working with other biomass, high biomass crops to try and that will outcompete uh, what was there before and, and, and then uh, winter kill and provide a mulch mat to give you a head start in the spring. Again, providing a little bit of weed suppression, also adding carbon. So this is uh, peas and oats that were winter killed. This is a chicken tractor up there that's also working it. That's, uh, this is not the same, but that's just garlic coming through the, the heavy mulch. And then this is, this is the latest uh, project. Uh, and this is no-tilled sorghum sudan grass mixed with tillage radish and uh, forage soybean. So trying to bring it all together. Uh, and so what we have here is each of these plants is doing something different for us. We have tillage radish here. I dug a little hole here. You can see it's starting to, to push down and and, and break up a little bit of subsoil compaction, take up extra nitrogen. The forage soybean here, fixing nitrogen. Uh, um, and then, and then the, the, the sorghum sedan grass here, which is planted late August, so we'd already taken a second cut of hay off this. Uh, but again, substitute hay for grazing, the same kind of system. The, right about this time, the perennial forages are starting to go to sleep. They're slowing down. These are gonna try and reproduce as fast as they can uh, given the, and, and try to get to the point where they can uh, produce some seed. But it's too late. We've timed it so that they're gonna winter kill. So uh, 
this was, this was a couple days before I left. We had that October snowstorm, dead as could be. That's all laid down flat. And so that will remain there under snow until spring, and we'll be able to plant uh, a spring grain in, in March just as the, the frost comes out of the ground, and that will give it a little bit of a head start. So in this same approach, it's not just, uh, not just plants, but also using animals. And I'm sure most of you have read about you know, Joel Salatin's method of following cows with chickens. And uh, here, we're, it's not this also using uh, chickens for, for fertility and planting around whole grain fields. This isn't our chicken tractor, but it's similar. Uh, this one holds 600 birds, and you do whole fields moving it around. Um, they've, the farm down the road that we work with, they've got uh, six or eight of these things running now. And you can see the result in, in the following year. So just another thing, you, using the animals and the, the plants, using the genetics of these and what these pigs, I mean, uh, Joel Salatin talks about a pig being a, you know, uh, letting the pigginess of a pig come out. And that's the train with the radishness of the radish, the, you know, the vetch of the vetch, letting these, the, the life forms express do what they want to do for the benefit of the farm. So, in closing, I, I, want to, I, I wanted this to be kind of more of a hopeful note, you know, because it's, a, it's very easy, especially, you know, following Bill McKibben, to be a little <laughs> bit down. So, you know, the, you know, as I've transitioned into life on the farm, I just become continually more amazed at you know, the improbability of life and the, and the incredible diversity that we have. And in New England, it's, we're surrounded by it. I mean, if you leave a patch of ground, you know, it will just, you know, 20 years, you have forest. I mean, it just, you gotta be fighting it back to, in agriculture. But I mean, I recently took a trip to, uh, to Jackson, Wyoming, um, and we're and, and, and out here, you, you life is, is is struggling in places, and you've got to really work to enforce that and and create that diversity and, and, and foster it. Um, but and so it highlights our role in that process. And so it, it's really occurred to me recently how unique our role is in that process as the only sentient beings on Earth that can understand that process and actually consciously do this. And I, f I feel more and more strongly every year and the more I spend on the farm that because we have this ability, that we have a responsibility, it's our job to promote more life on Earth and promote the conditions that promote more life on Earth. But that in doing so, it's not a struggle. That it is in that process and being part of that, it's, you know, we were talking about the, uh, you know, the pigginess of the pig. Well, the humanness of human, I think, maybe in farming and building soil and being part of that system and being conscious and excited about being part of that system. And in doing that, it, we create a healthy environment and we can produce abundance. I mean, because we're surrounded by, an, as, as I mentioned, we're not limited by natural resources. We're, limi we're limited by, be, we're, we have the ability to live off that interest and that abundance. We just have to shift from an extractive economy to this regenerative focus and let the life, the abundance that surround us carry us. So, thank you.